Hello everyone. This is the middle of May 2022 and over the next month or so, various institutes and universities across the country are going to have their examinations and interviews for PhD. So I thought this will be a good time to address some of the very important questions which often come to the students who are about to go for PhD. Questions like whether to give precedence to the institute or to the research topic or to the professor. Now, if I were to discuss all of these issues, and there are so many of them, it would be a rather long video. So I have decided to address these issues one by one. In this video, I'm going to focus on the issue of whether one should go with a new professor versus whether one should go for a senior established professor. Let us first discuss the case of a new professor. When you're uh, going to uh, work with a new professor, there are obviously some advantages and disadvantages. The disadvantage one may think is that the new professor is rather inexperienced and that may be so, but there are also certain uh, very important advantages. For instance, the most important advantage is that this new professor, because he'll have a little more time at his hand, he'll be able to devote himself directly working with you. He may also be working on a rather fresh topic. Please note that when you go to work with such a new professor on a fresh topic, it is almost guaranteed that on that topic, he has himself worked very recently in his own PhD or in his own postdoc with his own hands. So you'll have hands-on experience literally on that work. Compared to that, if you perhaps go to a more senior professor or more established professor who is perhaps also beginning to um, work on a new or fresh topic, it may not necessarily be true that the professor has actually worked with his own hands. Uh, it may be true that he has some fresh ideas in that topic, but it is not uh, necessary that he has worked with his own hands uh, on that topic. So there will be def definitely a difference in the quality of the supervision that you will get. Okay, so in this particular case, very, very special case, it is perhaps with the new professor that you are going to get a, 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 a more stronger and more hands-on supervision where the supervisor will know the nuts and bolts of the topic. Now, you may think that, okay, this professor is inexperienced, maybe he has not handled students earlier, but please note that many institutes have this policy that uh, if a professor, if a new faculty member has not guided any PhD student earlier, then usually they go for some kind of a joint supervision. So where a more senior member, a faculty member will be working. So maybe there'll be two supervisors for the student. So the, uh, it's, it's great for the student actually in that case. So just because you're, uh, it seems likely that you're going to work with a, with a relatively new uh, professor, but if there is a possibility of, uh, of working like jointly with another professor, it's the best of both worlds. You get the freshness and the enthusiasm and the hands-on approach of the new professor, as well as the experience of the old professor, uh, of the older professor. Another important thing is that uh, when you're going to work with a new professor, please understand that at the very, very beginning of his career, he has a lot of things to prove. Okay, this is true that he, he wants to prove himself to the department, to the institute, uh, to, the, to the research community in which he is working. And, uh, and this means, in the words of Nassim Nicholas Talib, that he has actual skin in the game, very much. Okay, skin in the game, he has it very much. So your success as a student ties in directly with his success. So he will be very much highly invested in ensuring that your PhD work is successful which is not to say that a more senior member will not be invested in your work, but he will probably have, logically so, less skin in the game compared to a newer professor because he has already established himself, he has already proved himself a more senior member. Okay, so these are some of the facts. Now, let us consider the case of the more senior professor. Now, conventional wisdom, of course, uh, tells us that it is better to go with the uh, with senior um, professor, a more established professor. Uh, that is certainly true because there are of course certain obvious advantages. He is uh, literally established, uh, he's, he's senior, he has a certain standing and reputation in the research community that he's working in. Uh, he has already guided students, he knows uh, the pitfalls that PhD students 
fall into and he is well aware uh, how to uh, possibly avoid them although even senior professors like it ultimately boils down to the student right so even if he knows what pitfalls to avoid the student may not be avoiding it but that's a different story altogether so overall he has a more uh, he has a better grip on the things and please note that the relationship with a phd supervisor it doesn't it does just doesn't end with the end of the phd with the defense of the student okay it is uh, almost like a lifelong relationship now uh, that means that if the professor is already established then in the immediate future uh, after your phd is completed when you are going for some kind of academic jobs or maybe postdocs then a recommendation letter from such a senior professor can actually be very very helpful like it can uh, really add to the strength which is of course not to say that a recommendation letter from a relatively junior professor is not strong but uh, i mean i i hope you understand that if people already know him that uh, if he, if he's recommending something then that carries more weight okay however however there are certain uh, disadvantages also and paradoxically the disadvantages that i'm going to discuss has like directly to do with the same causes which makes uh, working with a senior professor advantageous so consider for example a senior professor who is very well established in fact so very well established that he is like a big shot in the research community that he is working in so what happens is that he will probably get invited to a lot of talks uh, invited talks plenary talks this and that he'll probably have to travel a lot uh, he may be involved in a number of different kinds of projects uh, various kinds of responsibilities and in general what will happen is that his attention is going to get divided okay whether he wants to or not his attention is going to get divided this is fact although it is great for his own career but a student like a new student who is just starting to work uh, with him he will like like just imagine for yourself you would want to have some kind of direct contact at least in the initial days on a regular basis now if that is not happening because uh, because the professor is so very uh, much already already booked and and uh, engaged with other things uh, then uh, it may be a little bit disadvantageous for you so there's another side to it also uh, so not just necessarily a big shot perhaps there is a senior professor uh, who uh, is not traveling that much but even within the institute or within the department he is bar- burdened a lot with administrative responsibilities this is a fact okay this is a reality which always happens the more senior a professor gets uh, invariably some kind of administrative responsibilities will come his way unless he is actively trying to avoid those things uh, but that is uh, somewhat exceptional cases usually it happens so when uh, this more senior professor is so much burdened with administrative responsibilities and please note that these are very very important responsibilities like without somebody doing those things uh, like carrying out these responsibilities by devoting their time to it the institute and the department is not going to run okay so these are absolutely important but from a very selfish point of view like you as a student who is just starting to work with him if the professor is every day busy with these administrative responsibilities it may so happen that there is uh, like there's some kind of a disconnect okay the professor becomes disconnected with what the student is actually trying to do and especially in the initial days this is uh, this can be really really disadvantageous so what really happens in those cases okay so uh, for these kinds of professors when the student when a new student joins what happens is that usually uh, since the professor is not getting time to sit with the student on a regular basis what happens is that this student is effectively mentored by a more senior phd student or what is more common is uh, perhaps a postdoc will will guide the student effectively okay of course this uh, the the professor may meet with the student maybe once a month or so now this is not necessarily a bad thing okay because uh, if you are especially involved in some kind of experimental work then it is good to ha- uh, have some kind of a, a senior phd student or postdoc who is helping uh, you out to to actually get to grips with the uh, with the with the nuts and bolts of what you have to do okay let, 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 literally the nuts and bolts of what you have to do with the experiment so it's not necessarily a bad thing uh, of course this is not to say that like working with these senior people in the research group 
is any substitute for actually working with the professor. You still need to sit down with the professor, okay? But please also note that there are very much, there are professors who despite all their responsibilities, despite all their traveling uh, commitments uh, and various other commitments, they still take, I mean, make out time from their extremely busy schedule to actually sit down with their students almost on a regular basis, on a weekly uh, basis, on a bi-weekly basis and uh, help the student. Okay, there are professors like that. But this is very, very difficult, like the more senior and the more responsibilities they, uh, they have. So my suggestion is that uh, if there is a possibility for you to maybe join such a uh, group uh, under a very senior professor, uh, maybe write an email or so uh, to, to one of the members uh, in, the, in the group the already existing group, some of the PhD students who are working with them, try to find out what is the mode of operation there, okay, how the students operate, how the professor is managing the students. Uh, it is very likely that you may not get any answer, but if you never write an email, you will never get to know. So uh, there's no harm in actually asking and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Now uh, talking about experiments, as I was just uh, uh, speaking a few seconds ago, when you are working with a uh, new professor, if this is a hardcore experimental area, then it can be a bit of a disadvantage seriously. Okay, because if the new professor is yet to establish his lab, he has yet to buy the instruments, uh, get the lab running, then uh, yes, you when you join as a new PhD student in his group, there is nothing there in the lab. So where are you going to work on? That can feel like a bit of a disadvantage and it is it is uh, literally a disadvantage but okay there could be a positive spin to it also so suppose you are such a first phd student working with a uh, professor on a on an experimental topic and there is maybe nothing in the lab okay extreme situation so what will happen is that together with the professor this new professor you are going to build things from scratch like a very hands-on kind of almost like an entrepreneurial kind of thing that you are going to do and this kind of uh, thing once you do it it will give you so much uh, such a such a invaluable training and a, and a precious experience that uh, it can set you up beautifully for the rest of your life okay just consider a new PhD student going to work in a very established lab where uh, in, in a very established lab where everything is already set up. He just has to go there and do his experiments based on his ideas. And another student who is going on a lab where he's actually helping to set up the lab and then doing his experiments, there will be a tremendous difference in the uh, in the experience. Okay, uh, and, and this actually this can actually show up in the recommendation letter that this new professor four years down the line or five years down the line writes for this PhD student. He will always have a special place in his heart for these uh, first one or two PhD students who have helped to set up the lab. And when he writes in the recommendation letter that this has actually happened, this can actually go a long way in uh, projecting your own career uh, during your, during, uh, through your postdoc and for your academic jobs. Okay, because you have already proved that you can establish, uh, I mean, you can help set up a lab. Okay. So there are pros and cons to uh, to both the cases of the new professors and the senior professors. So I have laid bare to you uh, the facts uh, as they are. So you decide what you want to do. Okay. And on this note, I will I will end this video with this with this piece of advice that you have to introspect a little bit before joining. Uh, introspect in the sense that you have to try to understand what is your own personality what is your own working style and please be very very honest with the level of academic maturity that you are at okay this is very very important you have to understand what level of academic maturity that you are if you are not very mature if you still like to be mentored in a very hands-on approach then uh, it is probably better that you go and work with a new professor okay and maybe if you your working style is such or your academic maturity is such that you can uh, handle being on your own okay you do not need on a daily basis supervision you, you probably prefer to be left alone 
then maybe going to a senior professor is not such a bad idea at all. Plus, uh, please also remember, okay, this is very important uh, that uh, when you go to work with a very senior research professor, you'll be sitting as part of a large uh, research group. Okay, so there, every research group has its own personality. There are very various issues associated with it. So you know whether you will be able to play along well with others. Not everyone can. Okay, they are, uh, they are more suited for smaller groups as compared to larger groups. Uh, so again, introspect, understand, try to understand yourself, what will be best for you. Okay, and of course, try to be a little bit flexible also. Just because you have never worked with a large group, but you do realize that you have some kind of an open mind, uh, maybe you will be able to handle a large research group. So my advice is that be brutally honest with yourself, but be also uh, flexible when making these decisions. But above all, please try to make a like an intellectual from the brain decision instead of an emotional kind of decision. Okay, so all the very best to all of you who are going for the exams and interviews over the next month.